you for joining us and we welcome you to Redeeming Lives International where God is getting all the glory and honor. And we thank God for those lights there shining on us and even those lights up there shining on us. Glory be to God. The light is on. The light is on. The light is on. Somebody turn that light on. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The light is on in the spirit of God. And when the light comes on on you, you have to be ready. So the light is designed to bring heat. It is to designed to bring uh, resistance. It is designed to cause you to press in. It is designed to call you to wipe your brow. It is designed for you to call out and to cry out to God. So I come to tell you today that the light of Jesus is upon you to transform your life. Yeah. Extremely transforming, extremely transforming. I, I come to tell you today that the enemy wants your mind. He, he's really not after your money. He's really not after your cars or your homes or, 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 or your children or your family. Uh, but, but Pastor, you just don't know that they repossess my car and my home is in foreclosure. But I come to tell you that's just a byproduct of the enemy trying to tell you that God is not with you. But I tell you, all of that in God can be replenished. He is a redeemer. He is a restorer. He's able to take everything that the canker worm stole from you and give it back to you. Not only a hundredfold, but a thousandfold. That's Job. He'll give you double for your trouble. Double for your, your, your trouble. He, the enemy's really main weapon is to sow seeds of doubt and unbelief and and, and, and and try to destroy your relationship with God. He created an environment where you, you don't see any way out. He created an environment where everything seemed hopeless. He created an environment where it seemed like the best thing that you can do is to give up. He's coming out there your thought patterns. He's coming after your thought. He's coming after your mind. In Romans 12, 2 tell us, mm -hmm. be ye not conformed. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's a lot of things asking us to go with the majority rule. Go with what legislation has passed. Uh, and go, go with the new law. Go with the new end times. Go go after what the world says popular. But the, I come to tell you today, be not conformed. Amen. Don't get tangled and twisted in the world system of moving ahead, in the world system of success, in the world system of moving in, in a vein that man say is good. Yes. What gain is a man to Gain the whole world yes. and lose his soul. Mm -hmm. Be not conformed, but but to, to this world, but be ye transform, yes. transform. Pastor, what do you mean transform? I mean be ye change. What God is desiring to change you into. What God has spoken from you from the foundation of the earth while you was yet. In your mother's womb, the Lord had already declared what you would be. So when we have, when we're going through things and when we're facing things, God said, "Be changed." Yes. Well, Pastor, how do I be changed? The first thing you must do to change is to stop. Mm. But that's just the beginning of the process. When you stop, you have to replace. What you was doing with something that God desired for you to do. Transform. I stop doing what is not in the will of God. I transform it by replacing it with what God desired for my life. Then I have to commit to it. 
then I have to make it a habit. Then I have to practice it. Then I have to decree it. Then I have to declare it. Then I have to believe it. Then I have to walk in it. And then I have to be. So transform. It means to change. And how do we change? It means to stop doing what you're doing. Then to get in God's desire. Start designing what God has for you. And you replace it with that. Because if you don't replace it and you just stop, you'll find out it's like a, 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 a commercial where a, a program on TV where you push the button and, and it, it, you, you just freeze it for a minute. You just pause for a minute. And that's why so many people go back to what they used to do in their mind is, and, and they're conforming to the world, but they're not transformed. Transform is not stopping doing what you've been doing. I know you've been told that, but that's not true. Mm. When God said transform, he don't mean for you to just stop sinning. He means for you to desire him, to worship him, to walk out the calling that he has called you to do to fulfill his will and his assignment for your life. He didn't mean for you to just stop sinning. Mm. Wow. It's not about stopping. Come on now. It's about Getting in the will of God, replacing what you was doing with what God would have for you to do, and then you make a commitment to it. Right you you give it all you got. You 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 make it a habit. Mm -hmm. And he said, when you do that, then that's what that happens in the renewing. By renewing, that means that you you stop making things new. That means you go back to your original assignment from God. And that you go back to the will of God concerning your life. That means you begin to walk in the newness of life. Mm. Renewing your mind. Yeah. See, once you begin to re it, it make up a decision to change, to stop doing what you used to do and replace it with the will of God and you commit your life to it, that's what you call renewing yeah. your mind. But pastor, I wish you could stop there because I was liking what you were saying, but now I feel like I'm not going to like what you're about to say. Now you may prove. What you mean prove? That, that you, you, you got to go through something. You got to be tested. You got to go through trials and tribulation that you got to prove whether or not you've been transformed by the renewing of your mind. Well, Pastor, can I be transformed and renew my mind without being proved? No, you got to be proved. You got to prove what is good to God, what God is self, what God see as maturity in you, as God see as perfect will of God. You got to go through the test. But you got to be able to come out on the other side, Nick, and, and give a testimony how good God has been and what God brought me through and how I know that God will never leave me or forsake me. You got to go through a test and come out and tell your testimony. And the Bible says we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by what we are being tested. For yes. what we prove yes. God in. Yes. Well, Pastor, I, 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 I mean, can I renew my mind another way? <laughs> no, it's all about the test. Yes. It's all about proving who God is in you. It's all about proving what God said is true. It's all about proving that God is victorious in every area of your life. It's about presenting your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not, be not transformed to this world. I mean, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. Yes. Yes. Transformed. Yes. Thank you. By the renewing of your mind that you can prove some things. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor, I've been tested so much. See, you, you, your test is really designed. To prove 
the will of God concerning your life, concerning your character, concerning all that God has called you for. It, it, you know, the Bible tells us that God tempt no man, but he only tempt you or test you for success. When he tempted Abraham, he tempted Abraham that Abraham may prove that God was faithful. Yes, yes. You only allow to take a test that you can pass. Mm -hmm. So, so let, 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 me, let, let me break it down for some teachers out there. Some teachers, you may give a test to some kids that you already know that they're not going to do well with. You already know that they're not going to pass. That's not how God is. So, Pastor, let me get there. You saying that every time I take a test, I must already know I'm going to win. Every time I take a test, I must know that God has already provided victory. Every time I take a test, I must know that the enemy is already defeated. Every time I'm facing a test, I must know I'm going to have an A. I'm going to have a hundred plus. I'm going to be on the honor roll every time. For me to pass every time I take a test. It's designed for me to be renewed, re-educated, redirected by the Spirit of God into the will of God every time I take a test. So, Pastor, you said that inside of me there is a, an ability, even in my worst moment, in my worst days, for me to look for the best to happen. You saying that I have an ability in me, the Holy Ghost inside of me, even when I'm faced with hospice, that I can expect to be healed. Yes. But, 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 but what if? But what if I don't get healed? I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. What if it doesn't happen? You still must position your, you, yourself. You must position yourself to count God worthy. To praise God, to, 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 to say that God, I live, and for God, I die. You must position yourself in the situation to count God worthy. Yes. See, God is responsible for the results, not us. Right. Even, even, even if he don't do it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we must learn to be content. Whether I'm full or whether I'm empty. Yeah. Whether I'm hungry or whether I'm satisfied. You must learn to be content even if he don't. Extremely transformed doesn't speak to your situation. It speaks to who God is in your situation. Who God is in your relationship to you, who God said you are. It speaks to the deity. It speaks to the victory that's in Jesus. It speaks to the power of the blood. It speaks to the ability to be forgiven for your sins and washed as white as snow. It speaks to who God is and what God has done. Even if you don't. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Even if you don't. See, God don't stop being God mm -hmm. if he raised you up from the dead, Lazarus, or, or, or is you, if you remain in the grave. He don't stop being God whether you get the result that you're looking for. He's God all by himself. We're not here to manip ma manipulate God, but we're here to prove that God is true no matter what we go through. Yeah. Amen. I heard someone say in the Bible in Daniel chapter 3, verse 16, it said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. Come on now. 
answered and said to the king of Nazareth, King, mm -hmm. all right, it, we're not careful mm -hmm. to answer thee mm -hmm. in this matter. Mm -hmm. come on, come on. If it be so, mm -hmm. our God whom we serve is able to yes. deliver us yes. from the burning fiery furnace. Yes. Yes. And he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Yes. But even if not, uh -huh. even if he don't, yes. but if not, yes. uh -huh. even if he don't. Yes. See, that's when your mind is transformed. That means things outside of you don't really even matter. Because the inside lives victory. And you speak from a place of victory. You speak from the residue of the dust that fell from off Christ when he rose up from out of the grave. You speak from a light living place, a, 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 a place of light that speaks to darkness no matter how dark it might be. But if he don't. Woo, glory. But it knoweth unto thee, O king, mm -hmm. even if you don't. Yes. There is something that's transformed in a person. When you've been dealing with things for a long time, you've been crying out to God. And you cried out to God so much you thought he had deaf ears, and then you stop crying out to people. Then you find out their ear was even deafer than, the, than God. Then, yes. you decided to just trust God mm -hmm. and believe God yeah. and renew your mind yeah. and hold on to the word of God no matter how it turns out. Yeah. It's in that place mm -hmm. where you receive deliverance. It's in that place where you receive healing. It's in that place where you receive the victory of God. It's in that place where you are transformed, when you are able to say, no matter how bad you want it, no matter how long you've been dealing with, even if okay. he don't. Woo. Even if he don't. Even. See, 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 he, 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 he said, oh, King, I will not serve that God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. King Nazareth wanted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when you hear music. All right, come on. The other people worship. Mm -hmm. When you hear the horns and the trumpet, I, 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 I need you to bow down and worship the gods and, and the golden staff. But his mind was made up. Yeah. It was already in a place of victory. Yeah. It, it, it was already proven to be able to pass the test. Yes. He was already transformed. Mm -hmm. So Pastor, what you're saying, you said that before the test even comes, you can make up your mind whether you're going to win or not. You can prove God's God by you just renewing your mind that I won't bow my knee to anything. You can shout right now. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory to God. And we're giving the enemy so much attention in the test. We're crying about what we're going through. Oh, woe is me. You can't imagine what I'm going through. You can't imagine what Jesus went through. All right. And Jesus said, prove me. Let me know that you have already been transformed. You have already been changed. That you are already living in victory. That you are always already walking in the newness of life. Let me know that you have already replaced my will for all these other things that would occur. Everything trying to get your attention. People doing you wrong. People lying on you. People talking about you. People not appreciating you. The more you do for them, the less they say thank you. All of that 
only designed to get your attention, but if you take a stand today by being transformed, by renewing your mind, then I'm going to worship God in all love. I won't bow down to it. I won't allow it to take all my attention. I won't give it all my focus. I won't lose sleep over at night. If, even if he don't do it, that, that's when you see victory. Because you see him bigger than what you're going through, bigger than what you're facing, bigger. And you, you know, you, you know. Sometimes we don't realize that we're worshiping stuff. I wish God, God had a He has a recorder in heaven, but I wish He had one on earth that we could hear. See how much we talk about problems. See how much we talk about the things that are not going right. How much time we spend on talking about what went wrong. God said so you got to change all of that. You got to put victory in it when you don't see victory. You, 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 you got to declare that you have already won when it seems like you're losing. You, 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 you got to have already made up your mind that if God be for me, who can be against me? You have to already be in that place. So when stuff comes, you don't have to get weary in well-doing. You can keep going and moving in the will of God. There is a flow in God that most people cannot even get in. It. I'm talking about Christians. Because to get in that flow, you have to already declare you're going to win. So when you face a problem and you see a problem, people, Peter, and you sense that it's God and he's calling you to do something that you never even heard of people doing, and at first you was a little confused because you thought he was a ghost on the water, but because you want to draw near to God and because you want to be able to please God and your desire is in, is in the heart of God, you say, God, if it's you, be me to come. Yes. But what I think about more than Peter going out of the boat uh -huh. and on the water, yes, yes, yes. I think about those that didn't get out of the boat. Yes. Yes. I think about what type of mindset they had. Mm. Even seeing Peter, they still didn't get out. Mm. I wonder, in the presence of God in the church, how many people are paralyzed and the enemy got them defeated in the presence of God? I'm wondering how many pews are being filled in, in with mindset of being defeated on Sunday morning. After the worship, after the reading, after the prayer, I'm seeing how many people before the word go back, they go back to their problem. Before the word go forward, they go back wow. into losing. Oh Mercy. Mercy. Jesus, Lord. I wonder sometimes mm -hmm. if they saw the same God, what stopped them from getting out of the boat? I wonder what was their mindset was that I, 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 I know they saw Peter sink. But I wonder that there was some sinking that took place in the boat. I just wonder, I, I just wonder that was it a sinking taking place? In a, a place where they thought they had security, a place that they thought was safety, a place where they thought that if they stayed still and, and, and not risk anything, not being able to prove God is God, that they would be secure. I'd rather sink getting on, on the water than to sink in the boat. I was a saint going to hell trying to serve God 
than not serving him at all. Yes. I'd rather sink mm -hmm. in the water than to stay in the boat and realize that I'm a disciple, but I never really trust Jesus. I'm saved, but I really don't trust him. I know how to do the, the heavy lewis, and I know how to give, give the points of prayer. I know how to uh, 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 um, disciple uh, 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 people according to what the scripture has said. But when it really came down to me in my life, I never was transformed. I never dealt well with problems. I never was able to prove the victory that Jesus wanted out of my life. I always seemed to crumble under pressure. When things got difficult, when things got hard, somehow I wandered away. I was looking for people to blame. I wanted a pity party. I wanted people to feel sorry for me in a time when Jesus was trying to prove me. Wow. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. I'm just wondering. Yes, yes. Wonder. Mom, even Hezekiah, uh -huh. when the Lord sent, I believe it was Samuel, to tell him that get your house in order. Uh -huh. Now is the time to go see your maker. Mm. I wonder how many people in ICU mm. that didn't realize it was just mm. a test. Mm. I wonder how many people that was in a car accident that was supposed to walk out of the car end up transcending onto heaven. I wonder how many people is at the mark that's supposed to have been raised up like Lazarus. I wonder how many people that didn't pull on, that didn't talk to God, didn't say, I serve you well. I stood on your word. And I'm asking you to honor your word and honor your servant. I know what you have said. But I'm telling you, I gave you my all. And I didn't give up when test came, when the fire came. I didn't give up. I stood my ground. My mind was already transformed. I proved to you what was good and acceptable will of God. So I'm asking you right now for 15 more. But he has left. The word that I went for, he has left. We'll call him back. I'm standing on my relationship with you. I'm proving who I am to you. I wonder how many people didn't realize that they had to prove who God is in difficult times, in troubled times, in hard times. He's waiting on you this morning. Get out of the boat. Yeah. Even if you seem get out. Mm -hmm. Even if you look like the deaf angels have come to get you, go ahead and speak about your relationship. Go ahead and tell them how you trusted him and how you believed in him and how you worship him. And even at your Lord's how you still call on the name of the Lord. Tell them how faithful you've been to him. Pull on it. Thank you, Jesus. Prove Amen. what is good. Yes. Prove what is acceptable. Yes. Prove what is the mature and perfect will of God. Yes. Prove that you have passed the test. 
Prove that when the test came, you stumbled, but you got back up. You stumbled again, but you got back up. You didn't never stop getting up, trusting God. Prove it to Jesus. Prove it to Jesus. Glory be to God. Exodus 14.10, and we're just going to go. Here we have Moses. With the children of Israel. And verse 10 said, And when the Pharaoh drew near, they are being pursued by Pharaoh, and they, 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 they are facing the Red Sea. The children of Israel lift up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptian march after them. Mm -hmm. And they were so afraid. Mm. Time for the test. Mm. The children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, has thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? There wasn't enough space. There wasn't enough burial ground. There wasn't enough casket. So did you take us out here because there was more room for us to die? Mercy. Do you ever feel like that? That God has left you? Do you feel like, I tell you, there's a saying that said, he, he brought me too far Come on now. Come on. Yes. to leave me now. Yes. Yes. We can't give up. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, 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 and they said, wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Why did you bring us out of bondage? Mm -hmm. Why did you bring us out of slavery? Why did you bring us out of a terrible situation? Why are you demanding that we be proven and that our mind be transformed? That we replace the old God for the new God. The old mind for the new mind. Why shall we pass this test? Mm -hmm. To carry us forth out of Egypt. Verse 12. Is not the word that we did Tell thee in Egypt, saying, mm -hmm. let us alone. Mm -hmm. We're trying to take you somewhere. Yes. But you keep saying, leave me alone. Yes. Oh you, you're facing hell and high water. You got hell in the house. You got hell out of the house. And you say, leave you alone? Mm -hmm. Where shall you go? Mm -hmm. Where shall we go? You have the words of life. Mm -hmm. Where shall we go? Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptian. I don't mind being a slave even unto death. For it has been better for us to serve the Egyptian that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still. Yes. And see the salvation of God. Thank you, God has already provided. Stand still. And fear not. And see the provision of God. See the healing of God. See the joy of God. See the peace of God. Fear not. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Which he will show you today. Wow. Not tomorrow. Signs, wonders, and miracles are happening. Not because we're doing it, but because we're trusting him in it. Not that we know our left from our right, but because he's guiding us all through the day and all through the night. And that we're trusting him in his ability to do for us what we can't do for ourselves. For the Egyptian whom ye have seen today, ye shall them, ye shall see them again no more, no more forever, no more forever. For the Lord shall fight for you. Quit fighting flesh and blood. That's not even your fight. It's really things above that's going on. They are being manipulated by spiritual things. Principalities in high places. 
So you have to bring your thought unto the captivity, every thought unto the obedience of Christ, and to bring it, lock it down into the word of God. Don't, don't fight people. The battle is the Lord's. And ye shall hold your peace. There's so much victory in peace. Peace really speaks to salvation. Really, peace really speaks to the shalom. Really, peace speaks to the finished work. Peace fits, speaks to there's nothing missing and nothing broken. Peace speaks to the finished works of God. Yes. Hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore cries thou unto me, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they go forward. Sometimes you have to walk where there is no path. Jesus. Sometimes you, 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 you have to walk where there, climb up the stairs where there is no stairs. But you got to keep going. You got to keep moving. You got to stay consistent. You can't be in today and out tomorrow. You got to stay consistent. Yeah. Nobody want anything that haven't made up their mind. If you're going to love me, love me on Monday and love me on Tuesday. Don't tell me Wednesday that you, you don't know. <laughs> Make up your mind. Be consistent. Yes. Go forward. Don't go forward today, then tomorrow I don't change my mind. See. But live up that rod and stretch forth thy hand over the sea. And divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you're missing your miracles because of confusion going on, and you're not able to hear the voice of God. Wow. Oh my God. They only went cross because Moses was able to hear. Mm -hmm. One man. Mm -hmm. The millions of people, only one person was able to hear. Jesus. Fear took. Generation after generation because the inability to prove who God is. Mm -hmm. I imagine how many people died and is dying mm -hmm. because we cannot hear the voice of God. Wow. Jesus, Jesus. In the midst of the turmoil, in the midst of the confusion, in the midst of the complaining, in the midst of uh, 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 all of that was going on, he still didn't lose the ear of God. He still was able to hear in the midst of the test and prove who God was. He was able to prove who he was. He proved what was good and acceptable and the perfect will of God even in the wilderness, even in the midst of the enemy. I make your enemy be at peace with you when your ways please God. Is your ways pleasing God? Are you proving who God is in the midst of your test? Extremely transformed. In the midst of Pharaoh and the wilderness and the Red Sea, I'm able to stop and be still and fear not and see the salvation of the Lord. And I'm able to replace that fear with faith in God that he shall provide and shall prevail and shall make a way. What are you thinking in the midst of your test? What are you thinking? Well, you know God. You know I've been serving God and I've been praying and I, I, I've been giving and I've been coming to church and I've been doing... But you, have you been transformed? Are you proving anything? Are you passing any tests? That God has designed already for you to win. Are you still in the ship? Are you still laying in ICU when the Lord said, Demand the blessing, demand the healing, demand who you are to me? What are you proving? 
tell you today, what you blaming God for may not, will not be his fault. You're designed to win that test. You're designed to prove who God is in the midst of that test. God said you shall reign with him. But you also just suffer with him as well. No cross. No crown. I'm coming here giving you the word that God has given me to give you. By next week this time, you should see signs, wonders, and miracles taking place in your life. Because you're going to look at the test and have a transformed mind. And you're going to be ready to prove what is good and acceptable will of God. Be blessed, but pass that test. Amen.